One other concept is we might have the function defined just from one side or the other. In this particular case, we could take f of x and x and f of x and then let x approach a just from the left hand side and when we do that as we're moving along here to approach this limit we call this the left hand limit because we're moving from the left hand side and our notation for that if you notice here at the bottom is x approaches a and we put a little minus sign looks like where the exponent usually goes because we're approaching from the negative side so we're approaching from the left hand side Similarly, we could do a one-sided limit but just from the right-hand side and we could let x be to the right of a, then we could let it approach a. So we could move along here just from one side and we call that one then the right-hand limit. And since we're moving from the side as we went out there that would have positive x's, we typically write that as the limit as x approaches a with a little plus sort of positive, so this means the right-hand limit. I'm coming from the right. We're going to look at the heavy side function, and this is the definition. We'll look at what it means in a minute. It was named after Oliver Heaviside, and Oliver Heaviside was an English, he was kind of an engineer, mathematician, and physicist, and he lived from 1850 to 1925, so in a mathematical world that's fairly recent. And he did some work with this function and so they named it after him. But let's look and see what it tells us. So we've got h of t is 0 if t is less than 0 and it's 1 if t is greater than or equal to 0. So we could look at the graph of this and I look at this as a switch because basically at zero you're going to flip a switch and you can turn something on. If you do much with computers and you're used to binary and zeros and ones, think of you know the switch off, zero, on, one. And essentially this one would turn on at zero. So the function value is zero until you approach zero and then anything from zero on it gives us a value of one. So as I'm looking at this function, does it have a limit at zero? Well, I can approach this function from the left hand side and I do approach a function value of zero. I can write it as the limit as t approaches zero from the negative or from the left hand side of the heavy side is zero. I can approach this function from the right hand side and see that I approach a function value of one as I approach zero. So I could write that as the limit as t approaches zero from the right hand side, that zero plus, and that is a one. So it does have one side limits, it has a left hand limit and a right hand limit, but the limit as x approaches zero does not exist because the left hand limit does not equal the right hand limit. We can formally state this, assume f of x is defined for all x near a except possibly at a. Again, we don't need the value defined right at a. Might be, but doesn't need to be. Then the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l if and only if the left hand limit, there's our x approaching a from the left equals l and the right hand limit both equal L. So what this is saying is if the limit exists at x equal A and that limit is L, that will only exist if the left hand limit equals the right hand limit equals that same value. And that's kind of what we just kind of saw on the heavy side. It didn't exist because the left hand limit was 0, the right hand limit was 1. Those values did not equal each other. The limit of x approaches A does not equal L if either the left hand limit doesn't equal L or the right hand limit doesn't equal L or both. It's kind of a consequence of this and if either the left hand or the right hand does not exist then we say the limit does not exist. So as we're trying to determine if the limit exists we can check out left and right hand limits. They need to both exist and they need to equal each other to have the limit exist at A. So let's look at an example here and we first see that we have the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of g of x and we've got the graph of g of x here and so I am going to approach from the left hand side and we see that we do approach a function value of 4. 
Then we're going to look at this. This is a right hand limit because it's telling us to approach to from the right hand side and as we do that we see that we do approach the function value of 1. Therefore the left hand limit exists and the right hand limit exists but the limit as x approaches 2 does not exist because the left hand limit does not equal the right hand limit. Let's just look at one last kind of strange thing. If we want the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of 1 over x. Now cosine of 1 over x is probably not something we're familiar with so let's look at the graph and in looking at the graph I'm going let's see it's hard to see what goes on at 0 so let's zoom in a little bit and See, it looks like we've got some oscillating, but it's still hard to determine what goes on at zero. We could zoom in some more. I'm going, oh, is that approaching zero or is that oscillating? I zoom in some more, and it is a bit hard to see what's going on. Just trying to do this with resolution, I get in even closer. Notice my resolution there from point, negative 0.005 to 0 0.005, and it appears that this thing is oscillating back and forth, and in fact, as you approach from either side this thing is oscillating. Now I couldn't make the slide keep continuing going but bottom line from either side we keep oscillating between 1 and negative 1. The left hand limit never does equal the right hand limit. These guys just keep oscillating and therefore the limit does not exist at x equals 0.